<laughs> thank, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mr. President. Yeah, I, do. Um, I think the first thing I want to acknowledge is that the president was right when he said we're misled. Mm. And one of the misleading, <laughs> and one of the misleading things which I was telling Zizi now was, we were told that uh, the president, if he goes back to office, he will amend the constitution of the Republic of South Africa so that he stays forever in power in South Africa. The second one was that he's concocting charges against President Zuma. Hmm. And that President Zuma is not corrupt, he's an honorable man, <laughs> and therefore he is uh, fighting against President Zuma because he's got his own ideas on how the ANC must go forward. And thanks God, we lived to see for ourselves that no one was actually concocting charges against Zuma. Zuma was corrupt himself. And uh, even when they left the office, the people who were, who were, you know, concocting charges against him, he still got new accusations in the absence of those who were alleged to be concocting charges <laughs> against him. So, 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 so we've realized much more later that we're actually misled. The question which, yes. Mr. President, you need to deal with mm -hmm. is the issue of corruption. You can say all good things here. The reality of the situation is that we are counted amongst the most highly corrupt countries. Yet there is no high profile or a political figure, including a business figure, who has been successfully jailed for corruption. It happened under you, one of them was Tony Engeni, and then later on there was Jagis Levy and all that. Corruption is very high in South Africa today, but there's no single individual who has been jailed for so, that. So, so and, and which means yeah. that corruption is being glorified and being celebrated. Mm. And as a result, that is driving a lot of people away from uh, what used to be a glorious movement. So, uh, if you deal with that, Mr. President, I think your organization will regain a lot of strength. The second issue you need to deal with is the issue of the land. We shouldn't shy away from it. The land is in the hands of the minorities, and we know, and you know that history better than me. And we have agreed that willing buyer, willing seller is not working. Mr. President, the policy of willing buyer, willing seller, which you adopted, it was going to be good if our people had money, they will buy. But even when our people have money, Mr. President, and there is no willing seller, they won't buy. Because there must be a willing seller uh, to be the willing buyer. So you don't have the money, you cannot buy. Okay. Even when you have the money, there is no willing seller. Therefore, the land remains in the hands of the minorities. So we need yes, a sir, much more genuine radical program you can see to redistribute you can the land. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, so um, I need guidance on news, ne? right? Because I, I really want to give the president time to respond properly. I should continue. Am I good? Excellent. Well done, team. Mr. President, um, corruption, we can't debate that. But I think Juju raises a matter that I want us to attend to under the broader concept, context of the economy, land, right? And I want to go, that, go there by, earlier on, the 75-year-old man spoke. We have an economist amongst, in our midst, ladies and gentlemen. Master of Economics, um, President Big. Technical recession. Downgrades after downgrades. In your birthday message, you say the center, it is clear that the center doesn't hold, that we are not in a good space in the world, on the continent, but in South Africa, it's, it's there for everyone to see. Let's go to the land question and we'll address quite a few things around your own view around the policies that you led, the ANC, the, uh, yes, uh, yes. 
Juju is correct. Yes. Uh, we have to discuss very seriously. Yes. The uh, the land question. Yes, sir. The EFF has come to certain conclusions about the land question, which is stated. Right. I would start somewhere else. I would say let's discuss it seriously. Please. For instance, uh, what the Freedom Charter says, and again, Julius will know this. It says the land shall be shared among those who work it. Why, why was it phrased like that? I don't work the land. I live here in Johannesburg. <laughs> <laughs> it says the land shall be shared among those who work it. Um, if you said to the ANC, go back to the Freedom Charter and act according to what the Freedom Charter says, mm -hmm. it would say, not what Julius has just said, mm -hmm. it would say, okay, we therefore need to make sure that the land is shared among those who work it. Who works the land? Is the farm workers, the farm owners, and the people in the rural areas? Um, including where there's this communal land. These are the people who work the land, according to Freedom Chat. What do we do about that? <clears throat> it's not the answer, uh, Julius, if I understood you correctly. Mm -hmm. That's not the answer that the EFF is looking for. Mm -hmm. It's looking for something else. Or it could add that those who... Therefore, that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying... Uh, Who's in charge here? <laughs> Therefore, that's why I'm saying that uh, Juju, I, my, my, my uh, view is that where I would like to start mm. is a very serious discussion about this issue, the, about the land, uh, land question. Mm -hmm. There is a, a very urgent issue that we need to deal with, which is urban land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and indeed, there is nothing in the law or in the constitution or anywhere which would uh, uh, prohibit a government mm -hmm. from expropriating land, urban land, for urban settlement, for human settlement. None. So, and you see the squatter camps growing up all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and these land problems arise and people get evicted and so on. But it's clear that we've got need for urban land and so why does the government take the land? Why didn't your government take the land? Indeed, you may very well ask that question, why didn't we take the land? Again, you come back to the great issue that Julius was raising. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to avoid a discussion on this because it's bound to be very limited. Mm -hmm. the, uh, as Julius was saying, we, took, uh, we adopted this principle of willing buy and willing sell. Incidentally, I must say, it's not in the Constitution. Mm. It's not a constitutional imperative. I hear people saying, amend the Constitution, I don't know what for. Uh, <clears throat> because it doesn't, uh, the Constitution, even in terms of, uh, except to the extent of the, it talks about expropriation without compensation, which the Constitution would be against. Uh, but I'm saying that too, because we took that position. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was related to, is related to many things, okay, given you're trying to mislead us into discussing something we shouldn't. Uh, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. Freedom Charter, Constitution. Consequence, let's try and uh, uh, treat with the matter of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We've got to reconcile these different sections of the South African population to make sure that South Africa does indeed belong to all who live in the black and white. That's got various implications, that observation. Yes. One of them being, then how do, yes, indeed, there is a problem of the land, land uh, inequality, inequity, the land dispossession, etc. Matter must be dealt with. How do we deal with it in the context of this notion, mm -hmm. the kind of South Africa we want to build, which belongs to all who live in it, black and white, united in our diversity? It's got certain policy implications in terms of what you do. That's why I'm saying that I'd, rather, I'd, I'd want us to discuss this question, including this phenomenon, uh, and maybe the EFF has answered it. You have the, uh, the land restitution process. 
And people win the claims. They make claims. And they win uh, the land. And then when we are told, okay, yeah, your claim has succeeded, they say, I'd rather take the money. Mm. I'd, I'd like you just to explain to me why, why is that? Mm -hmm. Why are our people not taking the land? There are other complications. I don't know uh, uh, Advocate Gumbi if I can say this. Um, She's nodding. She says you can. Archbishop, Arch, Archbishop Makoma mm. uh, has written uh, his autobiography. Um, I, maybe I shouldn't have said this, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> and it raises a very important question. Mm -hmm. In the, in the very first chapter, raise a very, very important question about land. Mm -hmm. And it says the Makoba people who come from what is called Makoba's Kloof, mm -hmm. uh, their land got taken by force in the 19th century. Um, and unfortunately, when we decided on the period during which uh, you could reclaim land, we said from 1913 onwards. So he says, therefore, they didn't have this possibility to reclaim land. Mm. Um, mm. But it was still forbid some other piece of land was taken after 1913. Then it was possible to claim that piece of land, mm. and they succeeded to Makovas. Yes. And then he says, the problem is that the Makovas then started fighting among themselves. Mm over this piece of land. Mm. So much that they, the Archbishop and his immediate family, they pulled out. They mm. said, no, we leave this. Mm. Mm. That's not unique, mm. that phenomenon. So let us, let's discuss this question properly in detail without the slogans. I know, Juju, you've got to win support and then all that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to. Uh, <clears throat> Let's deal with the question. I agree entirely, mm. absolutely entirely, with the land Excellent. question. But let's, let's deal with it properly. Uh, Excellent. But, 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 uh, but certainly the heightened focus on land with regard to the majority, you will definitely agree is it's long overdue. Oh, uh, absolutely. Mm. Yes. Mm. The only thing I'm pleading for is that let us discuss this matter seriously. And soberly. Uh, soberly, yes. You know, like... Uh, <clears throat> You know, my mother, uh, my mother stayed in a village there, in the Trans Sky, uh, overlooking the immediate village, it's huge tracts of fallow land. And I was asking her, I was saying, but why is this land lying fallow? Mm. It's not, it's fallow, absolutely fallow. She so explained to me that uh, one of the reasons is uh, before, he says, when you grew up, the, these families owned a lot of cattle. So I said, yes, they did. They no longer, need, they grow, they no longer have those heads of cattle. So now they need a tractor mm. to come and plow this thing. They don't have money to buy a tractor, neither do they have money to hire a tractor. Mm. So I said, okay, I see that. Then she says, then what's happened when you grew up there were heads boys who looked after these cattle so that the cattle would not wander into the fields and eat up all of this maize. Mm. I said, yeah, that's, that's right. Mm. She says all the heads boys are now at school. Mm. So that even if uh, you were able to plow here, mm. there is nobody to chase away the goats because the children are at school. Yeah. So what therefore you need, she says, mm. First of all, you got to these open fields that you're looking at, you got to fence them. Mm. Mm. And these rural people they don't have the money. Number two, you've got to hire a tractor for them so that it can come and plow this thing and so on. She says these are some of the reasons that these lands are lying fallow. Okay. Now, when we therefore discuss the land question, we must get down to that kind of detail. That level of detail. What is it that we do? Uh, what is beyond, it that we beyond, do to... beyond pronouncements, beyond policy implementation. I want to go to 
to calls. Um, um, we have asked, I, Mr. President, I.